Smelling may help forth your intent to know your reigning element and be with color a testimony to know your principal agent thereby. And ye which would by smelling learn of your principal agent truly to discern as white and black be colors in extremity so of odors soot and stinking be. But like as fishes know not by sight no mean colors because their eyne bright have none eyelids for their sight closing so mean odors shall not by smelling be known of you this is the cause why for nostrils be open as the fish's eye therefore mean odors be not in certain smelled by the nose as mean colors be seen Heavy smell is not as clerks think the middle odor, but only the less stink. Old fathers wrote by their doctrine of their experience, which is maturing, that if ye meddle sweet, savor, and redolent, equally with stinking to prove your intent, the soot shall be smelled, the stinking not so. The cause ye may learn now ere ye go all sweet-smelling things have more purity and are more spiritual than stinking may be wherefore it is in air more penetrative and is more extendable and also to life more acceptable as friend in nature and therefore rather received by you sure Odor is a smokish vapor resolved with heat, out of substance by an invisible sweat, which in the air hath free entering, and changes the air and your smelling, as savor of meats changes your tasting, and as sounds changeth your hearing, and as color changes your sight, so odor changes smelling by might. The cause of odors to know if you delight, four things thereto be requisite. First, that subtle matter be obedient to the working of heat, for to present by a fume the likeness of the same thing, from whom that fume has his beginning. Also to bear forth that pure fume and fair, there is required a clear, thin air, for thick air will not bear it far, but it will retain it much faster. And so thick matter obedience hath none to the working of heat, as it showeth in stone. Heat maketh odors, cold shrinketh by reason. Dung hills in summer stink more than in winter season. Pleasant odors engendered be shall, of clean and pure substance and fumigal, as it appeareth in amber, narda, and mirror. Good for a woman, such things pleaseth her. But of pure substance with a mean heat be temperate odors, as in the violet. Of a mean heat with substance impure is odors misliking, as aloes and sulfur. But when natural heat beginneth to spill, then thereof ariseth heavy smell, as fish smelleth, that is kept too long. Natural heat rotteth, so the smell is strong. Stinch is a vapor, a resolved fumosity, of things which of evil complexions be. And when humor only is in corruption, so that the substance be not in destruction, thereof shall only heavy smell arise, but not very stinch come in that wise. Of every stinch the cause of that chance is only corruption of the self-substance. And when evil substance shall putrefy, horrible odor is gendered thereby, as of dragons and men that long dead be, their stench may cause great mortality. 
It is not wholesome to smell to some coal, for quenching of some sniff a mare will cast her foal. When the qualities of a thing according is to your nature, good odor will not miss. But when the substance is contrary to your kind, the odors thereof odious you shall find. Fishes love so smell. Also, it is true, they love not old kindles as they do the new. All things that are of good odor have natural heat for their succor. Though campfire, roses, and things cold have soot odors, yet octors told how heat virtually enclosed is the scale with pureness of substance why they so smell this old opinion you may teach your brother how no good odor is contrary to another but it is not so of stinking smells for stench of garlic voideth stench of dumb hills of odors this doctrine is sufficient as in alchemy to serve your intent your works to understand thereby when things begin to putrefy also by odors this you may learn subtleness and grossness of matters to discern also of mean substance knowledge you may get with knowledge of corruption of natural hate and knowledge of diversity by good attendance when humor corrupteth and when the substance but our substance was made so pure and clean and is conserved by virtue of the mean that ye no stink thereof shall find albeit that it putrefy for his own kind the third sign and the third testimony to understand your principal agent by is sever called of mouth the taste which evermore is cause of waste of the substance of the same thing which ye make proof by tasting, saper should be much better judge than color or odor, and more refuge. Were not taste a perilous thing, while our stone is in working? For it is hurting to health and life, it is so greatly penetrative. Above all subtle things it hath victory, and pierceth solid things hastily. Wherefore it is peril, and not good, much or oft to taste of that food. It comforteth metals, as we well find, but it is perilous for all mankind, till perfect red thereof be made, such as in fire will never fade. A lewd man late that served this art tasted of our white stone apart, trusting thereby to find relief of all sickness and of all grief, whereby the wretch was suddenly smite with a strong paralysis, whom my master with great engine cured with bezoars of the mine. Therefore, though taste by common reason should be best judge at every season, yet for that taste is abominable, sepor is here not profitable. Yet of some parts separable, a taste may well be convenable, before conjunctions to make a say, whether they be well wrought or nay. Howbeit a wise man hath help sufficient by color and odor to have his intent, for many men can choose good wine by color and odor when it is fine. But for new wine, not fine in general, the true taste is most surety of all. For smelling hath organelles but one, nothing discerning but fumous things alone. But taste hath six organelles without doubt, to feel quality of things within and without, which nature ordained against peril and strife for more surety of things having life. An ape chooseth her mate by smelling, men and popinjays trusten to tasting, for many things be of good smell, which to taste be found full ill. For they may be abominable, sour, over sharp, too bitter, or of great horror, or venomous, stinking, or overstrong, the taste is judge, and voideth such wrong. Old men wrote in ancient time how that of savours there be fully nine, which ye may learn in half an hour, as sharp taste, unctuous and sour, which three do subtle matter signify. 
and other three do mean matter testify as biting taste, saltish and weirish also. Other three come thick substances from, as bitter taste, under sour and deuce. These nine be found in many a noble house. Five of these nine be engendered by heat, unctuous, sharp, salt, bitter, and dulce. But of the nine, the remnant, all four, be made with cold, as is the supper sour, and so is the sourish taste called sapor pontic, and less sour also called sapor styptic. Also is weirish taste called unsavory, with cold engendered effectually. Sapor of two things hath his conception, of diverse substance and of diverse complexion.